PNC believes that they're entitled to rule Guyana. And I think when they look at the Burnham's actions and Burnham's doctrine, they believe in their hearts that they're entitled to hold political power because that is their only way of commanding respect and having a good life for themselves. So their, their ideology is, is, is trapped in a time warp and a time warp, and they're disconnected from, from society in the real world. So they're heading along in an opposite direction to what the rest of the world is going. And they, they, even though they, they know that, they don't know how to do it differently because they've never learned how to win hearts and minds. When Burnham was in office, the world was a different place. We had, a, as you know, it was bipolar. We had tremendous amounts of dictatorship going on in Latin America and, and the region, but it was in the self-interest of the United States because this is their backyard, as they call it, right? Burnham was allowed to get away with a lot. So they never learned how to cultivate the attitude and behavior of looking after people and really meeting the needs of the people. So they are accustomed to that. And when they were in, op in opposition for the 23 years, they had an opportunity to go back to their rule book, fix things, and come back to the people properly. What they did is to pull a wool over your eyes, play a game with you by moving a few pieces around, pull a couple of parties together. And I would say that the AFC contributed a lot to their victory because the AFC had a lot of momentum. Um, it was a, somewhat of a third force. And they are always looking for those pieces to pull together to create momentum for themselves. The PNC alone is a spoiled um, um, fruit. No one will touch that. But because they still have a lot of loyal supporters around who will support them without any thought for what the consequences could be, they will continue to use that. And that is why they always play on the race card. So, so what they're doing today is what they will do in the future. And I always say, people need to understand that the PNC is a dangerous political party. They don't believe in the will of the people. They never did. And they will never do that. Because their aim is always to capture the economy, control the economy, and direct the economy. That is the rule book. David Granger is do, do not doing anything differently. He came from an era where they were loyal to the Burnham regime. He was involved in rigging elections. That is how they know to stay in power. But what they didn't calculate was the fact that the world has moved beyond that. Mm -hmm. And we have the globalization of world politics where most of the economies that were in, in, in dictatorship and authoritarian rule had to accept democratic governance as a principle to be, connected into re to be connected with the rest of the world so that the world can move forward together. So everyone is marching in that direction. They should know that. They have advisors who are scholars who can advise them, but they, they don't want to take that on because it's too much work for them. The PPPC is a relevant party and will always enjoy majority support because we believe in working hard for a vote. They don't believe in that. They believe in finding a way to get into power and hold on to it at all costs. That is why you will see David Granger making that move to unilaterally appoint um, James, James Patterson. Patterson. Because it was calculated. We just need to get into power, move to GCOM, and capture GCOM. So apart from Patterson, look what has unfolded. They, they captured the entire GCOM. So, James Patterson was just the figurehead, but all the lieutenants too. They were able to, to capture. And this is the reality. They knew that they had to control the elections machinery. It's not just the casting of the ballot. It's who is going to tabulate and pronounce. But, but, but you, I mean, in 48 hours after election, the statement of polls are all available the night of election across Guyana, both the PNC uh, the APNU, AFC, all of us across Guyana had every single statement of polls that was tabulated at the, at the polling the site. The media, the observers, observers the things, right? So within 48 hours, all political parties, the observer groups tabulated that. We know that the, the 10 regions, we have tabulated all nine regions that were declared. The PP were over 50,000 plus votes. 
when we tabulated all of the 879 um, statement of polls in Region 4, we were ahead by almost 18,000 across the country, 34 plus seats. The, the PNC and the APNU knows that too. You know, the observer group, if you listen to the Commonwealth statement, the OAS statement, the Carter statement, they have done statistical analysis of all of those. They can probably, in, in, a, in a confidence level, know the fact that the PP is one election. They will not have come out, not just with election fraud. We know electoral fraud has happened. But the fact is they have come out with the tabulation process is wrong. They have also said they know the transition, they use the word transition to a new government. So we have all validated basically what the results of the election is. So no matter what the antics of Mr. Granger, GCOM, APNU, you know what is interesting today, they moved the containers again from the Art Trunk Center back to GCOM. They did not notify us, as I said earlier, but we went there to make sure they got there safely. There was no app new person looking to see whether the containers were more safe, moved safely or not. They know the fact that they can never go into that container because they know they have rigged the, the numbers, they've tabulated incorrectly, blatantly in front of live television. And Mr. Granger is aware, and that's why you don't see any app new person looking at those containers. Chris, you talk about antics. This got to be more than just... Mr. Granger, I not mean, understanding word. my word. But yeah. I think in your letter you talk about <laughs> one of those, trampling yeah. on democracy. Yeah, but I, I, I want to make a couple of points. APNU does not need to protect the, the, the containers. No. <laughs> the the GCOM is doing that for them. There is no distinction between APNU and GCOM. They're one and the same. You know, there's the Siamese twins. Yes. So. This is why Granger said he never rigged elections and he ain't going to do it because other people are going to do it. I want to take up the point you made, however, um, that about their feeling that they can have a right. There's, a, there's the other side of that coin, you that the other side does not have a right mm -hmm. yes. to govern this country, yes. regardless of the votes. Yes. Now, that to me is the most invidious thing insidious thing you could be thinking about yes. because it has all kinds of connotations I agree. that I am superior to you and you are secondary to me yes. that's a din that's a mindset that is extremely troubling in a multiracial society it is evil dangerous and harmful to our country and our society for any one set of people to believe that yes. about the other side, that they don't have a right. They, if, if you're saying that, what you're saying, I do not believe in democracy, and clearly, which, which is what clearly, we've seen clearly, here. Clearly, clearly. Regardless clearly. of how you cast your vote, yes. and you know, they, you talk about their intellectuals, and I know you from the UG and so on, you, you believe in the intellectuals, but there's some, you have intellectual bandits as well. well yes. Just like some of them you have around the place who are helping to steal elections. Yes, because we, they use the, you election, they, they use, you, they use the knowledge to, yes. to thwart things. I mean, when you see what is being written by some of the people and the justification for, for, for stealing elections, but, and it bothers me. But there's significant consequences to electoral fraud, not just... Yes criminal in, in Guyana laws, but across the world. And, and you know, Peter, when you're, when you're used to doing something yeah. repeatedly and getting away with it, what would make you change? Unless you dealt with harsh uh, punishment. I think they're pushing the envelope to see if this will indeed happen. In their minds, they feel that they're closer to the West than us because of their history. But that time has passed. We are now living in a world where democracy, human rights, and the rule of law are all paramount. So if you violate democracy, naturally you will violate human rights and the rule of law. The entire system will crumble. And because we're so interconnected, we can't afford to have a country fade away and become isolated. And they, I don't think they understand the consequences of their actions. The United States is not intervening. They're not interfering. They're just telling us, listen, my friends, if you want us to continue to have a good partnership, you have to follow the law. 
you have to uphold democracy and the rule of law. How can we deal with a, with a destructive society? How can we have a man who will not accept the will of the people? He will not rule in favor of the people. He will only look after a small class that will keep him in power. And the entire society will be, will be, will be cast aside. But Guyana has Ga Ga changed. If you look across the country, that everyone wants their vote counted right. They're standing up for democracy. It's not just the United States coming. I think our people of our country well, yes. is ready to stand up across Guyana to say, we will not allow another dictatorship in our land. And we will not allow Mr. Granger to take and trample on our constitution and break the rule of law. He did that in the no confidence vote. He lasted an extra year. But the fact is, I believe people have seen enough. I mean, Chris, you were part of that case. I mean, what is the difference between what is going on from a legal perspective of the no confidence to what is going on in the legal issues dealing with a recount? We, I mean, we need a verification first of our votes. You know, we're using the term recount. The fact is, we know the PP won the election. If the APNU feels that they have won the election, prove it to the world. Open the darn box and let us see if you won. If you can't prove that you won, then allow the PP to transition to government because we can show that we have won the election. Well, first of all, you have to follow the law. Yes. The Mingo mingles with his antics. Yes. He play all kinds of games. He, he sick, he, he tired. Um, then he could run up the steps and he could announce shout. <laughs> and shout. And he is told, look, that is not how it's done. That's not how the law provides for it to be done. And I thought the court was generous to him because if the cat steal the milk you're not, and you refill the milk, you're going to put the same cat there. Of course not. You wouldn't even put a cat. <laughs> he was allowed to go back and continue his mischief along with the intellectual authors and his directors yes. in, in the organization. Yes. I, I, I've written, I thought the court was a little bit too soft yeah. on Mingo. Not once was he wrapped on his knuckle for what he has done. Look, our firm is an auditing firm. We have clients. People are shutting down their businesses. What Mingo has done, what the three angry men in GCOM have done, what their sidekick in the administration of GCOM have done, what Granger administration has done is he has set this country back. And as you said, Peter, we've got the oil crisis now. Oil has taken such a tumble because the Russia and, um, and Saudi Arabia uh, are, are in a price war. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that, that price arrangement, they have come to an end. I think it's a March, so we don't know where that's going to go. Yes. We're lucky we get $55 a barrel. We ain't getting that for some time again. They have set us back. And you, you quite kindly pointed out my age. That's fine. It means that I have some experience. <laughs> we look I, up to you, Chris. I know, yes. the, I know the days when you had to push your car to get gasoline. I know when you couldn't. It was a criminal offense to, to have um, wheat. <laughs> it, to, to, or to have some dal. But, but it, was, when, when you talk about that, though, with, with what the, the official Gazette said about the coronavirus and what the actions that the government can do, do you relate that back to your experience of pushing your car and being? Well, they, what they have done, first of all, they went back. They have used ordinance number, is it 145 or 45? That ordinance does not even appear in either the green volume of the laws of Guyana, mm -hmm. which has been superseded by the purple volume of the laws of Guyana. It does mean it's not law, but it has just fallen by the wayside. Some clever Harry decided, look, we're going to get one of the most draconian instruments, and we will appoint Volle Lawrence as the minister. To carry, but she there's was, no ministers, really. But she carried out, you, we know what she did yeah. at GCOM's office in Hatfield and High Street. And she's the one who has, in fact, power to destroy your property. Now, coronavirus, it's bad. 
it's dangerous. It's probably exists and we don't know. It's like old time zombie. Mm. <laughs> but it's you don't need to burn a building to get rid of the virus. Or destroy my property. Or, you, can, yeah. you can sanitize. Or, or destroy it. Yeah. That's what yeah. you do. Yeah. So what the government, what Granger, they, uh, they, this is not a government anymore. They, they don't deserve to be called a government. Granger doesn't deserve to be referred to even as former president. He has done such harm to this country. But ultimately, think, every Guyanese will suffer in this and, process. And I think, I think Chris and, and, and Peter, I think Guyanese are at a stage where they are accustomed to having free, fair, and regular elections. They knew or they know that GCOM worked well before, right? And they understand what's going on. They know that there's interference from the PNC in GCOM. Right, they know that. They want their votes to be counted. Chinese all, not just the supporters by the side. Everyone wants to have a finality to this, and people want us to recount the ballots. No one is, is, is disputing that. We want ballots to be recounted, for Region 4 in particular. The General Secretary said, listen, we can count everyone even though the statutory time has passed for the other nine regions, he said, we don't have a problem. We will count from region district one through 10, and we will live by the result. We have been so forthcoming, bending over backwards three, four times over to accommodate the PNC. We have been doing that. I'm glad. Always. I'm glad you say and bending, people have to recognize bending that. over backwards because you didn't even need to we do didn't that. Need to go through all all of this. you need to do is tabulate the That's statements all. of polls. That's all it that is. All. That is what the man was forging. That is what he was calling out. He was non existent figures. Oh Christ man, the first thing they tell you in bookkeeping, if you're going if you're gonna the thing, make sure it balance. <laughs> But then there's a difference between 6,000 votes, I think, in the regional and general. So he, he crooked you know, the, the numbers on the general, and he forgot how to do the regional. So now the two doesn't even match up. And you know, they're taking but, advantage of the generosity of Guyanese. But yeah. we will not sit idly by and allow this to happen. So, this, this is not going to happen. So the point I was going to make, uh, that's indeed. But the point I was going to make is that we didn't, we simply needed to tally up the 879 state basic, basic polls. Basic That's mass. all. <laughs> the counting of the ballots was simply a concession yes. to them. But listen, they can't do that. You don't think this all is fiddling around with the courts, trying to manipulate the courts, trying to, 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 to have the ballot boxes moving everywhere. The only thing we ain't getting is to count them. We're moving them or we can't count them. They cannot. Because the number of persons who will be guilty of fraud, mm -hmm. and you know, we started by saying how sacred the vote is. Yes. And the vote, what the vote does, it makes the poorest person and the richest person, the university professor and the beggar, the person in jail, well, perhaps not in the United no. States, mm -hmm. and the free person. They are equal. The greatest equalizer you yes, could have is your yes, vote. Yes. And you steal that from me. And yet, the international communi community, the regional community, Prime Minister Mia Motley from Barbados, sent her team down. She took a position and said, OK, we're going to satisfy you. And then they say, oh, we want all the other regions. They didn't have a problem with the regions. Suddenly, but it was a de delaying tactic by Joseph Harmon, who is the one who went at Lamaha Street, because I was there, and announced, oh, you know who is going to be the winner. And even Granger said by sunrise the next day. He that, will... Oh, sunrise, yeah. <laughs> so. and, and, you know, what is, what is interesting is that the younger voters, first time, second time voters, who would have heard stories about the PNC, what they did between 68 and 1985. Many thought it was just, you know, far-fetched. A lot of, you know, blown out of proportion. But this experience is an experience that we should not have been going through. But I believe that we've come to a place where we will be able to retire, not 
the PPP, but the people of Ghana. You're planning retirement, right? The people of Ghana will be able to retire the PNC. Yeah. They oh, don't I have a future in this in this country. They're not part of development. They always affect progress. They always try to use their, their seats in the National Assembly to stymie development, to stall projects. They have been in control of the National Assembly for nine years. What have we accomplished? Think about it. And now the fact that you know they've they're stymied. In, they, they've yeah. been in control of the public service. They've control of, of yeah. so many things. For nine years. And the downside of our economy. In, in, in yeah. Look, of, of look, look at the result. Look at the result. We cannot afford to allow this cabal to continue to, 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 to strangle us. This, we are very, we're very resilient, we know that. We're very patient as a people and respect our elders. Hmm. But I don't believe there's any ounce of respect left for David Gray. And there's no, a significant crack in the, in the coalition. You saw, I mean, Dominique Gaskin, the son-in-law, and probably his wife, the daughter of Mr. Granger, comes out basically and said, they want to see a f clear winner. And not, only, not, big, not big enough. And yeah. I, I must tell you, though, um, it was more than 1985. 1985 was when they had the elections. Yeah. But the PNC continued that anti-democratic election right through up to about 1 o'clock the afternoon of December the 5th, I think, 1992. 1992. Mm -hmm. Right? When... Hamilton Green, he's my friend, I can call his name. Hamilton was Green. Was against Hoyt giving was, up? Yes. <laughs> it was against Hoyt. More than that, had his people. And the, the looting had started. And Carter called Hoyt and said, look, because Hamilton Green wanted the elections to be pulled. Carter said, no, 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 we're not pulling these elections. You call Laurie Lewis, get I calm in the streets. Say and the elections will continue. The other point we must never take for granted because for all that the PNC had done from 1968 to 1992, including the foreign elections and all of that, they still got their support base, did not remain changed. So we must not assume for those, for people who are politicians, you will have to get your work has to be, is now cut out. Yes. You can't assume the PNC is going on. It ain't going anywhere. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, if you go back to the PP campaign over the last few months and Dr. Ali talking about inclusive governance and, and equal opportunity president and, and the, the candidate list and the makeup of a multidisciplined party and the manifesto that talks about development across Guyana. I think the PP has put together a very powerful approach to inclusive governance, to uh, looking at all areas and ensuring that every guy needs benefit. I was very proud and impressed when Dr. Ali outlined the definition of an equal opportunity president. And I think any PNC supporter has something to look forward to because he's duly elected president of our nation and he will get a chance to run our country, hopefully very shortly. And I think, uh, uh, Chris, to your point, APNU supporters should not be worried that they will not be part of that process. I think Dr. Ali, and, and I know you, you've, you've campaigned on that manifesto, we, we feel very confident that, that we will deliver yes. for every guy. We because we believe in inclusive governance. And get back to your point, Chris, when I say we're gonna retire them, I don't believe they can, they can morph yes. themselves into another product. I think the PNC will be very isolated. They will still have their support base. They will still compete. But I don't think they'll have a platform that would allow them to be victorious after this. Yes, they, they, because they've come for a generation. They've yeah, completely discredited. 30 years in the wilderness because they've lost a generation of support. They have lost in terms of majority support. And I don't think that any right-thinking political party, the smaller parties, would want to look at the PNC and give them another chance. We will be inclusive. Our presidential candidate and general secretary already said, we will be reaching across the aisle. We will embrace each and every one. We believe in small and lean government and 
giving up political power so that we can get every one of our stakeholders involved, including the ordinary citizens. So yeah. and we did it before. And that's even all not small perfectly, parties but we've done it. certainly not yeah. perfectly. Not no. perfectly, of course not. We're not aiming for perfection, Chris. Yeah. But, but we, we will have to continue to build institutions. To by the build, continue to build our we've institutions. We've been doing that. Yes, continue to build it stronger. We have achieved electoral yes. um, success. We have been running free and fair elections. We have achieved that. This is what this administration has dismantled. They have broken down a fundamental pillar of democratization. You have to be able to hold free and fair elections to move forward. But if we don't toward this destructive uh, situation, you don't know when you'll have another elections. But I think, um, now I was a big critic of the PPP, particularly oh, yes. in, um, in the latter stages. I was a supporter in the earlier stages. Um, but I think not only must you, must people and society hold your feet to the fire, you must understand that some of the support you got was a rejection of the APN UFC as well. Yes. In other words, people didn't just vote for you, they voted against. They voted for the FC. They, they, or they voted against mm -hmm. the PNC, and they thought, look, if I went to the smaller parties, I risk, given the past experiences, I risk my vote not being counted. So you did benefit from that. The other point I would want to make, you have to distinguish between those who are misleading and those who are innocently being misled. You know, you... so. So yeah, because I think, I think that we should mention that, that, that the large that, the large part of the population believe that Mr. Granger won the election. He's told them that he won the election. You know, the fact they is, don't know better. he has not won the election. The numbers are factual; they're fair, fair and transparent. And he clings to, on to power. He's clinging on to power as his coalition is starting to crumble. But, but we, what we need to understand: it doesn't matter to David Granger yeah. whether he won the elections. You know. What matters to him is staying in power. So we can argue all we want about the ballot boxes and all of this. He knows that very well. That is not a consideration for him. He is looking for every avenue to hold on to power. You know, and he's trying to do it in a way in which he can sell it. And that's where the international community has become and that's, a part That's where the yes. dictatorship and the of course, rejection of, of democracy. Course. And Chris, and I, and I dare say, on the campaign trail, I made it clear to our supporters and supporters on the other side that you're dealing with a dictatorship versus the PPP that believes in democracy. Many people in Ghana don't really understand the two concepts well because they're only focusing on one individual. The PNC did a very good job trying to demonize the PPP and, 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 and our key figures. They did a very good job in doing that. So people in Ghana are still not fully much aware of the ideology behind these institutions. They look at the individual. So you put a, a man, you sell him, and people buy that. People now realize, or they, they're coming to realize that, listen, we have to go deeper than just that man, in the, that upright-looking man, and to look at how they think and behave. We know now, for those who did not know, know now what they're dealing with when they're dealing with the PNC. So you can put Granger, you can put any other person in a suit and tie, you will get the same result that you're getting today. You know, when President Carter went to Noruega in Panama, who is a, 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 a dictator, he's died now, uh, President Carter asked him, are you an honest man or are you a thief? <laughs> you know, if President Carter had come to Guyana, he would actually look at Mr. Granger and say, are you an honest man or are you a thief? And the thing about it is many people say, oh, David Granger is not corrupt. He is beyond all of that. But he is corrupt. He's corrupted by power. Any person who is obsessed with power, to the extent that they will deny the people their will, their democratic rights, that is corruption. In but itself. that's dictatorship. He's clinging on to power. He has lost the election. It's time for him and to concede the process. and move on. Yes, and, and you know the international community should not have to go to the, the length and breadth that they will go to let us know that we cannot just break international rule of law in terms of our right of the, you know, for democracy. And you know what's sad? They always use democratic means to get into power. And then they use undemocratic means to hold on to. 
it's a strange animal that you're dealing yeah, with. Yes, yes. It's Very a, strange a animal. Two-headed animal. Yeah. You know, there, there's Very something, strange. I, something else I want to raise. Um, and this was told to me by a foreign, a representative of a foreign investor, a major foreign investor in our country. When those diplomats from the A, B, C, E countries were made to walk out, they were disgraced, they were chased out, that photograph is now in just about every diplomatic arena you could find. What has happened, and you know, I, I, I know you, you, you're going to be stand by your PPP and so on. Of course. You remember what um, Priya Manik Chan did. That was indefensible. What the, the, the fear of blast, as um, Roger Luncheon described it. But what this Volley Lawrence and Basil Williams and James Bond and that lot did that day, getting the police, and that's another very dangerous thing. We have politicized the police force. And oh, yes. even, it was, even if it was just below the surface, what Granger has done, and that is, that is one of the things that, that hark back. And that's what I mean, is, is, is there a conspiracy between the GCOM, the government, and the police force? I mean, I'll give a quick example. I was out in Lusignan when we were peacefully protested. We were standing on the street, right? And the, the riot police came. I was right there. Riot police came. And not one time did they say, we need to disperse. They kept coming in a very aggressive manner and 10 feet away without once going on a loudspeaker and telling the crowd you need to move off the road they fired the, the, the shots and, and you know this thing is so distasteful and nasty and, and it's unfolding in front of our eyes right the president who's in charge the buck stops with him he's not made any public statements because he has so lost an election on the <laughs> shenanigans yeah. that occurred within GCOM. He's never told us why Paula Lawrence's signature was affixed to Region the Forest. Region 4 declaration form. He's never told the people of Ghana that he does not agree with what is going on with GCOM. All he's focusing on is that he's trying to tell the people of Ghana that GCOM is independent. He is actually the trying to say, of this. he's actually trying to tell the people that whatever GCOM does would be lawful because they're independent. We which, don't interfere. Which is absolute non. Which is absolute but non but that is how they sell it. You see it repeatedly. People begin to believe it, and he's using his image and his presence, the little that is left of it, to still keep his support base. He is only addressing his base, the camp, the Lamaha Street tent. That is the base. That is where he goes. And and, and his and crowds are getting less and less every because day. Because people are yeah. tired. They yeah. recognize that this doesn't make any sense. We need to get to the recounting of Region 4 ballots and all of the other ballots. We need to bring this process to conclusion. It's actually just one the day, one day will be yeah. Listen. We, that is what That is all we want. We just want the president to use his powers to ensure that we get back to counting, recounting the ballots, beginning with wherever he wants to start. But we need to get to Region 4 because that is the one that has get, the greatest contention. Get one accounting staff from, from the six or seven accounting forms you Stop have this in this country. The no, but they, yeah. they could finish that exercise. Yeah, but as I said, the European Union has done probably the best of the analysis. I speak, spoke with them the other day. They have gone through all of the Region 4 statements of polls. They have looked through the variation. They have come to a conclusion, basically, of who... The, I mean, so an audit forum can actually do this for us. You know, GCOM just need to, if they want to argue, no, produce, the, we have all the, answers produce the original <laughs> SOPs. Yes, so what is so hard with producing know, the original you SOPs? Know the answer. Yes. GCOM is trying to manufacture a result that favors the PS. Because it would expose right. them of fraud. Exactly. Now, I, I want to... Do you think Mr. Granger is so fully he has aware? He to be aware by now. And he what not stand up. I know, but he was not... First day, second day, third day. Yeah. yeah. But we're done two weeks plus. Is that... By uh, now... <laughs> The dishonesty. By now, the, the dishonesty smallest is, kid yeah. would have realized. Yeah. He knows. He has to be part of this. Because they don't want to repeat the mistake of Desmond Hoyt, an honorable man. What? Who conceded. They don't want to repeat that mistake. They saw that as a mistake. They believe that once they have power, you don't give it up. Maybe, you know, you talk about my experience. 
I remember after the, the, the 1992 elections. For some strange reason, I, I become friend with Elvin McDavid. Um, you know when the government changed mm -hmm. Elvin said he needed some help with his taxes. So did Ms. Viola Burnham, a, 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 a charming woman. And um, Elvin took me to a meeting, the, the famous meeting by the well, okay. where the plan was. And he was a chief, the GCOM? No, Burnham. Elvin McDavid. No, no, no. He was he was he was Burnham's um, chief political advisor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the plan was to kill Hoyt. That what it was. That was one of the tensest situations I've ever been in. So we are we are playing. You got some dangerous players, but the majority of people, majority of Guyanese, still want to go about their business in a normal way. But we must not forget the Granger. Is the is the, the the script writer, the director, the um, and chess player, and, and and the chess player? But you had other people. Look at the people who were behind the no confidence motion and and the sixty five that you need to afford for a majority of sixty five. Mm -hmm. And the troubling thing for me, as a lawyer, you had two senior judges, judges of the court of appeal, who didn't know that the majority of 65 is 33. I think, I don't know what they call them now, grades. In my class, it was little ABC and big ABC. But they know that. So we've got to be careful that in our midst, we've got these other persons who are prepared to toy with democracy, who play Granger's game. Mm -hmm. Toy with democracy because it helps them to stuff their pockets. Granger stuffing ballot box. He he wants the votes, and they want the riches, and, and they're stuffing the pockets with money. Yeah. That's what we face with. And as we go through the sanctions, I mean, I've I've studied much in terms of what personal sanctions. We know what economic san sanctions look like. Bilateral funding is is stopped. Um, partnership, you know, loans, whatever, are all. Uh, you know, Norway would stop the funding on, on the climate project. Well, they've already changed. Yes. They've already but on the personal side, what people don't understand, when you take a position in government and you take a minister position and your visa is pulled, if you have a son or daughter that is in the United States studying in college, they will be returning the next day because their visa are, are pulled. If you have any assets in the United States, your, your assets is frozen. For example, Joe Harmon, who is or was a, a United States citizen, just give that up. He has 10 years of taxes still in the next 10 years to show his assets. Any assets he has in the United States will be frozen if he is part of the next government. And, you know, the personal sanction is significant. And we don't want the economic sanctions on Guyana. The Western world do not want to give Guyana economic sanctions. The Granger has to realize all he's going to be doing is hurting our own people. But, but, but even, even, even going further, Peter, once the president wants, chooses this path, mm -hmm. then the next step is expropriation, nationalization, control and command of the entire economy. Because once you're locked off from the rest of the world, how are you going to earn? You have to look for intermediaries, and you will not know to own all of the assets. You will have to now control economic pillars. And that is the dangerous part that we're facing. So you, you can't try to hold on to office, become isolated and survive, because you will be cut off from the global supply chain. How else are you going to survive? Then you will start taking back. But our economy has already been on the decline. You know, we wrote the rice industry, well, the yes, forest industry, yes. the mining industry. What all did, has been done. What did Granger call them? The seven... The six courses. Six courses. But they all have yeah. been declining, right? They were betting on the oil. Now there's no money in oil, given what the oil prices are today. Exxon has shut down right now because of the coronavirus. They may rather, after all of this, leave that oil in the wells because their stock prices will remain maybe constant at, if it's reserved. If they bring that oil out at a loss, their stock price is going to go down. So our future on the oil alone is in jeopardy. And the fact that Mr. Granger has, has raped the Treasury, you know, the, the foreign reserves are gone. You know, our tax system is one of the highest in our nation. We cannot sustain. I'm not sure. I, I mean, in the, not, not, in, not in, the, in, in, in the region. We can't, we can't sustain an economic decline given the virus is going to shut down the global economy. How do we move forward? We move forward by counting the ballots, recounting the ballots, 
installing the rightful government and returning and to democracy. And returning to democracy. That's that is how we It's as simple this. as that. It's a simple thing. We don't need any big intellectual depth. We don't need to be pontificating. We don't need major research. All we need to do is to go to those containers. The future of Guyana is in those containers. <laughs> At one time it was in barrels. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's why it's moved from the oil. It's not the pile of Chris got shorter. <laughs> <laughs> he, he went up. No, no, you, you guys give me the shortest chair. I'm not, with, with no back support. But that's all <laughs> right. That's, it's a good test. Chris, a good test. You are really suffering through the next year. No, we need, we need to get to the yeah. recounting. That is where the future of Ghana is. Not in oil, not in anything else. We need the will of the people to be heard. And that is what Guyana needs to focus on. The international community has spoken already. We're on the right track. The PPP has always been on the right side of history. We are bending over backwards, I must repeat that again, to accommodate this process. And we're letting Guyanese know that we're willing to see this through. We are not going to condone any swearing of Granger using the backdoor to government because they believe in backdoor entry because breaking elections is a backdoor entry. And that's a legitimate, right? illegal government. Right. Absolutely. So apart from international support, Guyana is on board with the PPPC, not because we are a political party, but because we're doing the right thing. Guyana is on board with democracy. And with, with democracy... But the PPP has won these elections. Yes, that's yes. we have won the That's elections. a fact. So clearly we are really leading the process. But I want to talk about this uh, uh, briefly because I know the, the operators just signaled, Peter. But um, at some point it will go beyond personal sanctions or yes. sanctions against yes. persons. Yes. And look, we've just put our money in the Federal Reserve Bank yeah. of the United States of what, America. What happens if the Western Union is cut off and money grab? What's and going to happen? What happens if your correspondent banks, what happens if the, the yes, routing, Financial routing Action Task Force Decides that look, we, we blacklisting we, Guyana. Well, we know, we know, we've seen the, the examples the, around the, the world. The consequences are so severe, but Granger is sleepwalking or or, or just listening to his, his symphony. Symphony. No, he, he's over committing. Him. He's committing to Burnham's ideology. But actually, it's fraud. We can't. This is election fraud. This is. They've done it before. I know, but Peter. it's it's that's their that is twenty twenty election that fraud. That's a criminal. But he said he wasn't sure that that was Burnham's ideal. No, that was Burnham's they, very <laughs> existence. Right, but you know what? They sold to their supporters that the, the Americans would never accept the PPP government. They, they like the, P, the PNC and they will always support the PNC. They thought that they would have just got a little slap on the wrist. Hi, stop that. And they would have moved on. Not this time around. This is a because they just tried to steal an election. That is in why front they did what the they did because they, cannot, they did it in front of the world. It's yeah. just that we were not at that technological age where yeah. everything was out there. But when they did it in the seventies and the eighties, it was in front of the entire world. The CIA knew, the the the, the Scotland Yard knew, everyone knew. It's it's just a different time now. And if you go back to this, the you remember the, ma yeah. the making of a prime minister, the BBC, yes, uh, yes, uh, yeah. BBC or ITV BBC, show I think was, when you yeah. went, the, the, the days of um, the proxy votes. Yeah. And, and and you, you yeah. had overseas yeah. voting and, and Empty places lots and, uh, absolutely <laughs> but but I, I I agree with you this is easy to solve just Granger having to say let him look into his conscience all he needs to do is ask considering defeat but all he needs to do is ask Walter Lawrence <laughs> Honorable for a copy is better of than disgraceful loss if he just take the PNC copies of the SOPs that they all have eight or seven nine go home tonight Plug them in the, in an Excel spreadsheet. Peter, they I can will know. You they did that already. Absolutely. That is why the company so stopped they know that. halfway yes. through. They know that. They yes. know the result. No, the trouble is when you again I go back to my to my profession. After you doctor, after you forge the document, how are you gonna produce a good one? Yeah. Out? yeah. <laughs> so that's they they are really trapped. So playing musical chairs with the ballot boxes is not getting them anywhere. Yeah, yeah. The world knows what, what the answer what is it already. Does, it, does significant damage to our economy. And when we are faced with this coronavirus, COVID they, did, they, did, they did it before. We can, mm -hmm. It's it's a, a triple whammy but, with the oil price going yes. on. And, and, and Peter and Chris, look what they left us with 
1992. A bankrupt economy. And we're getting there's there no, very quickly. No, yeah. So they're not worried about that. That is the least of their... Uh, uh, Maybe that's their, their, that's their playbook Look what game. they did to us. They left us in a broken economy. And then they took a blanket so check now to fight the, the coronavirus. Doing that again is yes. it's like second nature for them. It's, a, it's important to us. We recognize that. They don't recognize that. But this is a different time. We have enough support in and out of Guyana, and we will get the voices of the people which are in those boxes heard. The will of the people will prevail. Democracy will prevail. And Guyana will win. Not just the PPPC and Dr. Irfanali, but Guyana will win. Right? We will be inclusive. We will reach across the aisle. And we will have people like our goodly brother here holding us accountable. <laughs> because we believe in accountability, we believe in transparency, we believe in good governance. Good. You will get that from a democratic government, you will never get that from I'll a great administration. I'll keep this part of the program. Yeah. That is why I injected it. That's why I put that part of it. 20 <laughs> seconds there, Chris, closing. Um, I think, again, we have to say, look, this we can easily get out of this rut. Just do the right thing, do the decent thing, do the democratic thing, do the thing of integrity and honesty that Granger so much embraces. Great, thank I you. Great, I, I agree. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a, a, a very interesting conversation. I I, I, uh, well, well go, go right ahead to you. <laughs> I'm appealing to Mr. Granger to please let good conscience prevail. Please let us see this process to the end. Let us start the recounting immediately and allow the will of the people to emerge and let us unite as one people, one nation, one destiny. Thank you, Chris. And you, that's powerful as we move on in the next couple hours, the next few days, as, as Mr. Todd said, Mr. Granger needs to do the right thing. Chris said Mr. Granger needs to do the right thing. Aptu supporters, you know, you have to understand that we are all Guyanese. The fact is the PNC and Aptu and AFC did lose the election. We have to work with you yes, across the board. News, you might want to yeah, say that. we across the board. Um, you should read it. Yes. Yeah, so after careful consideration, the Carter Center has withdrawn electoral experts and international observers from Guyana. The Carter Center remains committed to promoting democracy mm. and constitutional reform. And they they go ahead and talk about in light of the current injunction and subsequent legal process, there is not currently electoral activity for the Carter Center to observe. So here's another um, observer group. We had the OAS came out with a strong statement declaring electoral fraud. We had the Commonwealth come out declaring electoral fraud. Carter Center declaring electoral fraud. CARICOM coming in and trying to help. They've declared electoral fraud. They've tried to come in to help, to help us recount the votes or verify the votes in their tabulation process. All of this continues as Mr. Granger refuses to accept this defeat. And I was going back to the APNU supporters. We understand you have lost the election as a, as a PPP um, party. We have an inclusive president, Dr. Irfan Ali, as described, a very powerful manifesto that looked at development plan across the country. He will be an equal opportunity president. He will reach across the aisle and have inclusive governance. And we're all looking forward to a new administration. We have the important coronavirus to resolve and make sure that our, our people are safe and protected across Guyana. We don't need to destroy property or destroy lives in the process. We need to work as a caring society to ensure that we take care of our fellow citizens. Dr. Erfan Ali, as the president-elect, and I really believe that personally and by factual statement of polls, will put Guyana on a development path where all of us, all Guyanese, benefit regardless of our race or culture or texture of our hair or religious belief, color of our skin. He is committed and the PP political party is committed as a government to ensure that each one of us benefit. So let our vote count. Demand that Mr. Granger allow the recount to happen. Demand that those that committed fraud go to jail and demand that your right for the future democracy and the future yes. of your children come That's to play the in the near, near term. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. That was a paid program and the views and opinions expressed were those of the host and other speakers and do not reflect the views and opinions of TVG Channel 28.